Hello everyone, welcome to this video. So in this video, I am going to discuss question number 36 to question number 40 of KCT 2018. The question is, the common impurities present in bauxite ore, right? If you have read the NCRT thoroughly, you will get to know. The bauxite ore means, you know, right? Bauxite ore is nothing but the aluminum oxide, Al23 into XH2O. So this is the bauxite ore. Along with that, there will be little impurities like TiO2 and Fe2O3. These are the common impurities present with the bauxite ore that is Al2O3 into XH2O. So the answer for the given question is 3. Fe2O3. Fe2O3 is also called as hematite ore. Hematite ore. Right. So this is the question. So coming to question number 37. Very pure nitrogen gas N2 can be obtained by right so they have given a b c d option we have to tell where we get pure nitrogen gas pure nitrogen gas right so let us dis uh, discuss one by one option a what is that thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate what is this ammonium dichromate you know potassium dichromate right potassium dichromate means k2 cr2 o7 similarly ammonium dichromate means ammonia nh4 plus it will be so ammonium toys Cr2O7 if we decompose it decompose means on heating it will break down so on heating it will break down like this N2 gas right along with that Cr2O3 and there will be liberation of water and there will be liberation of water right so this is how it will break down so how many water molecules will be liberated around four water molecules will be liberated right four water molecules so this is how it will break down so this is a, a thermal decomposition on heating it will decompose this ammonium dichromate ammonium dichromate into nitrogen gas so b what is b in b treating aqueous solution of ammonium chloride and sodium nitrate you can see on the screen right so they are treating this ammonium chloride and sodium NO2 NaNO2 right so Na plus Cl minus they form salt NaCl and other things ammonium and NaNO2 it forms nitrogen gas will be liberated and there will be liberation of two molecules of water H2O two molecules of water right so C option C you can see liquefaction and fraction distillation of liquid air bit drain so nothing is there so it is not going to liberate any nitrogen and D thermal decomposition of sodium mosaic so unless you don't know the formula of sodium mosaic sodium mosaic means simply NaN3 this we call it as sodium mosaic if you take two molecules of sodium mosaic that is D option little heating even at room temperature it will be so unstable that it is unstable that it will decompose it will decompose to get two molecules sorry three molecules of nitrogen and two molecules of sodium metal so if you see very pure nitrogen can be obtained from this method only which method d option sodium azide sodium azide if i take it is so unstable that it will break and i'll get what pure nitrogen gas that will lot of amount right so the answer for the given 37 question is D right coming to question number 38 which is the common oh sorry which of the following oxidation state is common for all lanthanides right so you should know for 3d series elements 3d series 3d series elements means it is belongs to D block elements that to 3d series i have mentioned 3d because in d block elements it is it has got 3d 4d 5d right so 3d series element the common oxidation state is plus 2 for lanthanides it is a f block element right f block elements 4f block element the lanthanide the common oxidation state is plus 3 similarly the actinides whose which has 5 orbital so a n capital a small n means actinides will have what plus 3 as the common oxidation state so the question is the common oxidation state of lanthanide will be plus 3 right so this you have studied in the chapter d and f block elements right so you should know this so answer 
for the question 38 is 2 or the B option. So coming to the question number 39, so it is very interesting, it is also from D and F block element C. The electronic configuration of transition element X with plus 3 oxidation state is this one, right. What is the atomic number they have asked, right. So what they have told, they have told there is an element X whose oxidation state is plus 3 which has got the electronic configuration of argon 3D5, right. So we have to tell this element, this element whose atomic number will be, right. So see, 3 plus means I have removed 2 electron from 4s and 1 electron from 3d. So initially if I put this, it will be like argon 3d6 4s2, right. So argon 3d6 4s2. If I remove three electrons, first two electrons I will remove from 4s and one electron if I remove from 3d, I will get the electronic configuration of x3 plus, right. So, so this is the general electronic configuration of this element. So, argon means how many electrons will be there? 8. In d, there are 6 electrons and in 4s, there are 2 electrons. Total 18 plus 2, 20. 20 plus 6 is 26 is the atomic number because atomic number is nothing but the number of electrons right so uh, otherwise if you know the electronic configuration of scandium 2 zinc you can tell that iron will be having whose atomic number will be 26 and it will be having argon 3d6 4s2 so 26 is the atomic number so option b is the correct option for the given question 39 so this is the last question of this video in which they have given N propyl chloride reacts with sodium metal in dry ether to give right. So this is the famous named reaction known as Wood's reaction. So in Wood's reaction, Wood's reaction, you can see that N propyl alcohol unless you know the structure of N propyl. N propyl means common propyl. Propyl means how many carbon? There will be three carbon. CH2, CH2, Cl. This is N propyl chloride. Right, it will react with two molecules of sodium metal. So again, I will write N propyl chloride like this CH2, CH2, and CH3. So what happens in presence of solvent that is dry ether? Ether means you know, right? ROR. Dry ether, we take this chlorine this sodium and this chlorine they will react to form two molecules of sodium chloride salt and this carbon chain will bond to this carbon chain so here carbon carbon bond formation happens carbon carbon bond formation happens this this reaction we also call it as coupling reaction right here coupling happens carbon carbon bond so simply cs3 CH2, CH2 will bond to other CH2, CH2, CH3. So I started with N propyl and I got the carbon chain of 6 carbon, right? So for step up reaction, we, we tell to increase the number of carbon chain, we do perform this Woods reaction, right? So this reaction we also call it as step up reaction. Step up reaction. What does it mean? Step up reaction means. It means we are going to increase the number of carbon chain that too twice times by Wood's reaction. So we will get six membered common chain. So we call it as hexane. Right. So option six membered. See this is very long chain. We won't get this is four membered. This is three membered. The answer is six membered open chain that is hexane. A is the answer for the given question. Thank you.